Okay, third grade, we're gonna continue talking about solving word problems with multiplication. Um, in the first video you watched, there we go, we talked about the important strategy of read a little, do a little. So I wanna review this again because this is the most important strategy to help you solve word problems. So step one, how many of you know it? Read the entire problem and the answer choices and don't do any math but underline important information that you think your brain needs to know. Step two, start back at the beginning and read the first sentence and stop when you get to a comma or a period. I even stop when I get to the word and because and means something more is going to happen so I want to focus on the first part before I move on to more stuff. You keep doing that and doing that and doing that and you read a little, put a little bit on your board or your paper, read a little, do a little math, and then by the end you'll get to your answer and check it to make sure it makes sense. So yesterday, or in the first video, we worked on the problem about Leon who had shirts and jackets and when we read all the way through to the question we realized, hey, this is trying to trick me. I don't need to worry about jackets at all. I just need to focus on the shirts. We also learned about that keyword each, that each is going to usually mean multiply or divide, so keep an eye out for it. All right, let's move on again. Here's my problem number two. As I'm reading out loud, I want you to, don't touch your computer screen, but follow along with your finger or with your eyes so you can read the problem as well. Step one, read the whole problem. Underline important information to keep in your brain, but don't do any math. Here we go. A farmer planted six rows of seeds. Well, I know in math, there's a number. It's probably important. And rows, we've been working on that with multiplication. So I'm going to underline six rows. Okay. Period. Stopped. Good. Keep going. Each. Ooh, buddy. Each. Every time I see that word each, I need to box it or circle it if you like, because it's probably going to tell me multiplication or division. Each row had eight seeds in it. Well, I know in multiplication, we put things in the rows. So I'm going to underline the word row again, because it's a clue we might be multiplying. And I need to know how many go inside of it. So I'm going to underline eight seeds in it. Stop. Don't do any work. Just keep reading. How many total? This is a math word. This means how many in all in the whole thing. So I'm going to box it or underline it. I like to box it. How many total seeds did the farmer plant? 40, 48, 57, 14. Wow, I got some big numbers and then a small number. So this will be interesting. Now that I've read through the whole problem, I've underlined what's important in my brain. I found the key words, the math words. I'm ready to start doing some work. So I pick up my pencil or marker if you're using a whiteboard and I begin. I don't have anything on my board yet because I was just reading. Start with the first sentence, stop at the period. A farmer planted six rows of seeds, okay? So I know I'm going to have six. Rows probably means multiply, and there's an each next. I can also draw a picture because I know rows go across. One, two, three, four, five, six. Always check my work. So I'm going to start my six rows. There's the beginning of my rows. Each times row had eight seeds in it. There's my other number. This is my rows. This is my rows. And this is how many seeds go in each. Now I can finish drawing the array. I don't really like arrays because I'm kind of messy. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing arrays, I'm going to skip count or use equal groups because those are my favorite. So today I'm going to skip count. So in the first row, I have eight. The next row I have six. 
16. The next row I have 24. Again, I know how to count by eights, but you may need to draw a picture. The next row, 24 plus eight more, 32. Am I done yet? Nope. If I'm counting by eights, that means I got to do it six times. One, two, three, four, two more numbers. 32 plus eight. I could draw dots, but I know it's 40. One more time, 40 plus eight, 48. I think this is my answer. How many total seeds? This is how many there are in all. Let me see if that's one of my answer choices. 40, 48. So I'm going to circle 48. Now remember, if you're not ready to skip count, that's okay. Make sure you draw your equal groups or use arrays or repeated addition, but make sure you're always showing your work. You're never gonna see me just write on this board six times eight equals 48 without the work. I always show my work in math. Good job today.